Round 17 is done and uh, so this season is just flying by. Let's look at who is hot and who is cold in KFC Supercoach. If you are picking Luke Ryan from the Dockers in your defence in KFC Supercoach, one of the reasons is he has one of the highest scoring ceilings in the game, certainly in defence. It's been a little bit of a roller coaster this year, but he was at it again on the weekend. 168 KFC Supercoach points, the highest score of the round. 35 disposals, 30 of them are kicks, which we absolutely love. 10 marks, we know he loves to go back and get uh, the kick-ins, which helps, but he does a lot more than that. 13 contested possessions, and he went at 89% efficiency, so that is what the KFC Supercoach scorers love. That's his Second score over 160 for the season, and he's second over 140 in his past three. Another player who can absolutely blow your opponent away in a head-to-head matchup in KFC Supercoach is Shea Bolton. He was red hot again against the Swans on Thursday night. We know he can kick bags of goals, but he has other avenues to score as well, and Minnie McCalter moved him into the midfield uh, on Thursday night, and he was fantastic in there with 31 disposals and 9 clearances. He didn't actually hit the scoreboard himself, but he still had 10 score involvements, which shows how damaging he is and how influential he can be, and that's what is rewarded in KFC Supercoach. That's his third score over 150 for the season. Season, and he's averaging 110 over his last 10 matches. He's not that expensive either, so if you want a pot for the run home, I wouldn't mind uh, having him in a KFC Supercoach final. Now, on several occasions of this year, I've looked to potentially trade Will Ashcroft, and I just kept looking at the fixture and thinking how well we know he scores at the Gabba, and he's got a couple of good games coming up, including one against West Coast in Round 17, if I can just hang on to him until then. And I managed to do that, and it paid off better than I could have wildly imagined. Uh, 148 KFC Supercoach points, an amazing score. He was best on ground, 26 touches at 96% efficiency, so he's not winning many cheapies. That is an amazing stat, and seven tackles as well. So the issue now is I was always going to trade him after this week, but can I do that? His break even is all the way down to three. He's playing Melbourne at the MCG, which is a much tougher matchup, but in the form that he's in, I think I'm going to have to hang on to him. Who was cold this week in KFC Supercoach? Zach Butters finished with 81 points, which isn't terrible, but uh, if you were checking the live scores, at halftime he had only 14, and now I know a lot of people traded him in this week for Josh Dunkley, and I came very close to doing that myself, and that would have been absolute heart attack stuff if you were trying to follow the live scores for your new mega star recruit in at Zach Butters. Thankfully, he had a massive third quarter, which is what he's capable of doing, and really took the game away from Gold Coast, so he ended up with a pretty decent score, but not quite what you would have been hoping for if you were trading in a mega primo uh, this week. Now, the good thing for those of us who don't have him is he lost 25 grand, and and he's down to 578k, so that is a really good price for a guy who's been one of the best scorers of the second half of the season. Again, you need to have trades to be able to make this work, but if you could bring him in, he would be a great buy this week. Speaking of defenders, what is going on down there at North Melbourne? Everything's gone pear-shaped from, uh, you know, five, ten rounds ago when we had Harry Sheasel and Jack Zebel pumping out 100-plus scores every week for us, which was absolutely fantastic. Zebel started as the sub uh, down at Geelong, which is not ideal. He came on reasonably early, but the game was over at quarter time, and he only managed the 59 KFC Supercoach points. But that's not a great sign if they're starting him as the sub. And we can throw Harry Sheasel in here as well, because he ended up in the forward line somehow, which is not what we want to see, especially when uh, they're getting absolutely belted, as they were by the cats. So uh, this could cause quite a few headaches if you've got either of those guys, or hopefully not both, in your KFC Supercoach team. Jake Lloyd was on for a massive score against Richmond on Thursday night. Had about 40 points early in the second quarter when Toby Nankervis just went smack and ran straight through him, took him out of the game. And he was unfortunately, because it was a close finish and everybody else was scoring lots of points, Jake Lloyd actually lost points from there to the end of the game and finished on the 31, which was really unfortunate for people like me who have got him in their back line. So he'll probably miss a week now with the concussion protocols. Uh, he's lost some money as well, which is not ideal. Had to decide what to do with him. My bench cover in defence is not great, as to be said. So uh, a lot of thinking to do this week down in the back line, but I don't really want to trade Jake Lloyd, but I might have to.